Haiti, Sherry says Haiti is my beloved land. Oh, I never knew that I'd have to leave you to understand just how much I miss the gallant citadel where days long ago brave men served this country We start? You, do you ask question or I just talk? No, I think you probably already know what you need to say. Yes, more or less. Oh, this is difficult. How does it even work? Um, maybe we can start by pretending you're not there. Okay. Wow, yeah. The Gobbler. What you say? Okay, go get food. Go eat food, okay? Safe. Dinner time. Save food for me, okay? Yeah, I'll show you later, okay? Yeah. He's sick of him. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, I took a photo. You should go.
Vous bien dire où nous capable dire où le terrain ça pète là les longtemps c'est pas de consalté il était plus boisé la pluie était contente tomber facile parce que tu gain bois on est côté gain bois la pluie toujours aller fraîcher ça rend la pluie tomber facile mais qu'on y a la pluie pas tomber pour quelle raison parce que pas gain bois pas gain pied bois il a coupé tout pied bois. Il y a pas qu'on y a même bête et par un côté pour y avoir le soleil, même un dos. Et beaucoup ça a été chargé bois. Mais il a coupé au fait charbon. Nous venons là, c'est pas pour jouer, c'est pour bien. Nous venons là pour jouer, ni rien. Mais nous venons là pour nous aider mon pour nous travailler ici. Pour nous aider au plan de choucoucou. Nous venons là pour nous aider. Papi Turgen était venu parler, c'est moi, Jean Houlton. Oui, hier. Bon, à ça, Jean Houlton dit à ma septembre ensemble avec tout. Il y a des gens qui, tant que j'ignore, ils ont mangé, 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 Tant que moi-même, j'ai envie de faire des choses, je travaille, je travaille, je ne vais pas venir pour jouer, non Aider à planter des choses, c'est bon. Tant qu'on est quitté des choses, c'est bon. Ça, ça, Dana, il y a des gens en pile. Il y a des gens en pile. Ni nous-mêmes, tous nous aimons tout. Nous ne pouvons pas le craser. On nous met les têtes ensemble pour nous arriver. Oui. Sudden Force started in 2003 in India, in Orville, and at that time it was just Yorit, my wife and I. It was meant to be a small community of families that would live together and reforest the 70 acres that were allotted by Orville and make a tropical dry evergreen forest, an indigenous forest out of it. Um, but life took us to another direction, uh, totally and uh, volunteers started coming after five, six days that we started the project. The first volunteer came, and from then on, more and more volunteers came to the extent that now we have about uh, a thousand volunteers a year in Sadna Forest, India alone. And that's a massive number that is uh, enabling to do great work on the land, but also posing a lot of challenges. So it became much more uh, powerful but much more complicated than it was supposed to be. We're here because of this desire to, to live differently and to live in a community. And it's interesting, I think, the image that a lot of people have of a community is this sort of commune lifestyle where there's people playing guitars and you're just kind of hanging out, like eating organic vegetables and stuff. And when I talk to my dad about it, he imagines me just hanging out in this hammock, eating papayas all day. <laughs> um, I wish that that's what it was. I mean, I don't wish that that's what it was. And that's not what it is. It's, it's giving, you know, and sometimes that giving means giving up your comforts, um, sort of giving up your convenience in order to to sort of put your energy into something more positive. The intention was to, to enable us to express our goal in life, the meaning of our lives. And that's why we call the project Sadhana Forest. Sadhana is the, the focus on the truth, the spiritual path. And it was not meant, and it is still not, after eight years, it is not a career. Uh, it is not an ego trip. It is a way to uh, express our deeper yearns, our deeper meaning, and then um, hopefully uh, others can do the same, and uh, we can all, you know, grow as people while growing the forest and everything around us, and maybe helping some people too on the way. In some ways, Haiti was the place that gave me my umbilical cord, eh? Um, and as I reach out reach out and I start walking the world, I start connecting 
to a lot of different people. And then coming here to Sadana is like the ultimate expression of that. Where I find myself connected to people from Australia, connected to people from the US, from Canada. Yeah. And at the same time, having my roots um, and recognizing my roots being Haiti. Um, it, call, it calls in, upon you to, to be more human. Yeah. The experience living here, I think. We have the most diverse crowd that you can imagine uh, uh, coming to, to Sadna Forest. This ability to support everybody is very empowering for us. We believe in an integrated society. We believe in a society that people can, through diversity, create something very, very strong. Wherever, whenever you have a, a monoculture in nature, it's very weak. Whenever you have high biodiversity, it's very strong. And the same thing with human societies. They should be very diverse. If you look at uh, a, a town or, or a village um, at the midday, anywhere in the world, nobody is at home. Everybody is institutionalized. They may be in a school or a company or a prison or an old people's home or a, a mental hospital. Or, they are institutionalized somewhere. And in Sadna Forest, there are no institutions. Everybody is part of the community. Those that should be in a mental hospital and those that should be maybe in old people's home, like me soon. And, you know, everybody is, is in a... Is in a integrated and uh, this integration creates the the force of the of the society the force of the project force of the community what is the point what is the point this was my first question like for two days like I was like okay deforestation I get it but what is the point and yeah I was really attracted to this whole thing but it was still really interesting that it was just a group of people that want to live together and plant trees and I think that if more and more people came together in communities, not just to live sustainably, but to make life better for others through healing the earth and regenerating the earth and not just carelessly taking from the earth, that we can really create a new society. And I think Sadna Forest is part of that new society that a lot of people want to create. I don't think that it's utopian by any means. It's just... It will just be reality soon. I think that those move, this movement can be successful, but it won't be if it is completely radical as it is, if there's no transition, if there's no middle ground where people can come from. Like, do they have to come from complete urban living and complete Western developed life to acting like so many of the innovations in the last hundred years never happened? I don't think that that's real. I don't think that that's real. It, it will be for many people, but there's got to be, there's got to be a way to, to marry those. I want to help do that. Because I don't want to, I don't want to come live in Haiti and, and stay in a tent forever. Tamil people from our local area come to Sadna Forest and they say, wow, you live exactly like my grandfather. You know, they don't want to live like this. They want to live like they see on TV in a cement house. But they appreciate the fact that we want to live like this because they know that this will not exist. If, if nobody supports it, if nobody supports these uh, uh, people that do these works, that make these roofs, um, the, all this uh, uh, knowledge will be lost. So by our choices, we're preserving a lot of local knowledge. Pour moi-même, je pense que Sadana Forest, c'est justement un Sadana international. Qui est rentré dans un pays normalement, qui a une si bonne initiative, une si bonne philosophie, justement, pour le dégager. Mais d'après toutes les études que nous faisons, justement, nous voyons que Sadana n'a pas réalisé normalement la philosophie qu'elle a gagné. Je ne sais pas ce que ça, 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 ça signifie exactement. Je ne sais pas une signification fixe de ça dans la forêt. La chose est que j'ai passé 8 mois dans Sadna et je ne comprends pas vraiment ce qu'ils font. Vraiment. 
I've had some seasons where I think I get it. I think I'm really into it. And then something else happens where I'm like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> what is this place? What's it all about? So the Shokogu program started for biomimicry Europa by looking at oxalogenous trees, trees which are producing a byproduct of their metabolic pathways, which is carbonates. They put carbonates in the ground as they grow. And these carbonates can come from atmospheric CO2. This was interesting because CO2 in the atmosphere is a, a problem for global change, of course. It was also interesting because by doing this, they potentially act as fertilizers of the ground. So we thought it's interesting to test the model with farmers, actually, in places where it could be promoting uh, food security, to test the model of planting oxalogenous tree and trying to plant uh, food around it. And here we sit in uh, Cascade Pichon, a very remote place on the south part of Haiti, where farmers have asked uh, Sadana Forest to come and help fight erosions problem. There's lots of slopes here which have been uh, eroded to, due to slash and burn practice. So there was probably a very lush tropical forest here and there's only a patch of it left around the cascade which is behind us. So we've come to plant trees, plant vetiver, do bonds and erosion control practices. And of course, we came also with the shokogu. When it grows, we hope around five to seven years old, we'll start giving nuts. And these nuts are very highly nutritious. And they can green them in flour to do bread, to do soups, to do sauce. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. And they can also roast them to do a drink which looks like coffee and taste a bit like chocolate. That's where the name comes from. It's shokogu in Creole. So something like... Uh, taste of chocolate. Today, we want to understand your situation. What do you need? What do you want for this area? We'll try to do what we can to support you in this effort. We're people that live on the land, just like you. We understand your problem. We want to create a partnership of people that are working and living on the land. We didn't come here to talk about problems. We all understand, we all see the problems. We came here to talk about practical solutions. The most important thing for me is that we create optimism in this meeting. There are problems, but we can overcome these problems and we can do something together. So tomorrow morning, we start together and we start a new future. Um, so we hope that this tree will do a big difference for, for these farmers and it has already been doing a big difference in, in terms of interest. We came with 450 trees and uh, they all went like, like mad. I mean, all the farmers want these trees on their plot. So we have been planting a few of them, 200, and distributing the rest. And the farmer took them to their own garden to plant them and hopefully fight erosion, fight deforestation and also get some food. For my program, I choose Sadana as one of the field partners. The main thing is, is the way Sadana goes into the, the, the social tissue around. And an organization which is staying there and which is coming to stay makes a huge difference for me. Sadana is not coming to do a project, has no objectives in terms of time, like we have to achieve this in six months, in one year, or in 18 months. Project duration usually are ranging between two to three years, sometimes five, and this is mainly ridiculous in, in countries where, where things are so disrupted that everything takes a lot more time and everything needs to take a lot more time also to be accepted by the population.
So the sheer confidence of saying we are there to stay makes a huge difference in the, in the mind of people which are seeing you coming. And also the, the fact of being in very remote places of Haiti where not much other NGO go, and also where all the problems related to a massive presence of NGOs and of foreigners uh, arise have not arisen yet. So there's a, there's a way to do work in places so remote where you don't have to fight the problem of the country plus the problem introduced by all the other NGOs which work around you and which work there before you. So this gives me a feeling of, okay, if I start working with these people, I can base a long-term relationship and, and I, I can have confidence that in two years I don't have to look for someone else or to shift the whole program on the other side of the island. The building on aspect is much more important than, than getting short-term results. And then also the way Sadana works with volunteers which are living from product of the land in a very, very basic way. I think this inspires respect to the population around. We are not sleeping in a hotel, we are not, you know, all, all this, we are not moving around in big four-wheelers and this, yeah, this is making a huge difference. Having white people coming planting trees on foot and carrying everything with their hands, uh, you basically work like the population work around, so it's, it, it makes a huge difference for me. I think these are keys to, to a better integration. Exactement, pied chocogou, c'est un bagage, c'est un pied bois, je dis exactement l'été en Haïti, euh, passé 100 ans, après, on perd du pied bois en Haïti, et quand on a eu une implanté pied bois en Haïti, bon, euh, d'après information que moi, ouais, pied bois a exactement gagné, tout fruit, qui est ça qu'elle poté euh, pour la population, moi, ouais, exactement, c'est un bon pied bois. Si c'est comme ça, parce que moi, pas de vivre pied bois déjà. As a foreigner coming in, it's kind of hard to bring them this tree that they don't know anything about. It still kind of has this like mysteriousness for me because I've never really tasted the bread. I've never tasted the drink that you can make from it. But, you know, I've distributed thousands of these trees and told hundreds of people about, you know, how great the tree is, how nutritious it is, how it can just feed their whole family. In my opinion, that's been one of the problems, I think, with what has happened at Sadna Forest Haiti so far is that there's no knowledge about the Maya nut tree. Nobody uses it to introduce um, a new species of tree that produces food is to like deal with so many things like dealing with um, changing people's diets, like introducing a new food. I mean, people don't even know what this nut is. so. If I was to do a reforestation project here, I would probably start with like food trees, like mango trees and lime trees and papaya trees, things that people already have in their diet and that they want. And I think uh, moringa is an easier thing to distribute since, yeah, the people know it already and they have experience with it. So, like, they've seen it grow. And so when you tell them other things about it, they're, yeah, you're, uh, you're sharing knowledge that they can use right away, I guess. And, and the, that's the big difference. Because with the Maya nut, yeah, you tell them you just have to wait seven years for the tree to grow up and and the reaction, like we had a lady today, she says, I'm not gonna live that long. And this is just a you know, she's it's, she's not an old lady, but This morning I, I visited some chocogu trees and I was so happy to see them. They're exactly in the right place, you know, planted near a small canal of water. They're growing very nicely. They will provide so much food and shade and, you know, generations and generations will live under them and sit and, and love and, and argue and, and play and, you know, this gives me hope. I, I don't know, I worry about it. I mean, I, what I've seen is that when I walk around the town is that a lot of the trees that I, I saw go into the ground that were healthy are now dead. Um, I don't think that people, I don't know, I have the feeling that people may not value them and be taking care of them. It may have been, a, for me, a misinterpretation when I first got to Haiti. 
and with the Hosa Dana project, I assumed, kind of just from being around a couple of weeks, that, you know, a lot of the Haitians in the community didn't uh, want anything to do with Sadana, or that they, you know, maybe they was that they didn't understand what we were doing, and so that for that reason, they didn't want to have anything to be a part of that. And so I thought that their body language was maybe a little bit distant or hesitant towards us, but after these past couple of days of this tree distribution, I, I maybe I, I probably was completely wrong with that. And, you know, they're just as eager to kind of interact with us as we are with them. Bon, si t'as gagné un lot et instance qui t'a venu pour pas faire rien, c'est ça qui pas bon pour nous. Mais le système ça da ça da la forêt ça les bon parce que les vignes de haut ni na connaissance et les vignes de haut avec plantio, en bon parce que dans la canon nous pas pied bas au fin des mêmes pieds mangou que t'es condamné au coupé. Les mon a nécessité, il pas gain moyen possibilité. Puis mon gars les emporte les, ils coupent les. Quand ils c'est puis mon gars les donne les bail fruits pour mon manger. Puis là maintenant ils sont capables de couper le tout, en bon. Et ça il pas il pas bon. Et c'est dans le système reboisement, donc elle puis bon pour nous. Il lance avec 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 reboisement parce que reboisement c'est lui qui c'est lui qui a pris ça. Reboisement, c'est lui-même son, son, son la ville. Ouais. Si vous déboisez ou déboisez ou vous déboisez un pied bois nul, et bien ce pays vous va Vous ne pouvez pas vous faire un pied bois. Tandis que vous avez un pied bois, vous avez un pied bois qui va aller, qui va aller dangereux ou fait. Vous avez réussi à couper un bois dans sa vanne. Mais vous avez réussi à planter deux trois avant que vous voyez qui sont réussi. Oui. So yeah, many times I do feel like if we put all the focus of Southern Forest into like hiring a team of like really healthy workers that were like capable of doing a lot of work in a single day and doing like a lot of heavy work on the land there would be a lot achieved in terms of like physical uh, forest work but then that's really not what it's about like it's much more than reforestation i guess it's just a conscious way of living like doing reforestation but doing it more consciously or like doing anything like cooking a meal or anything everything is about like doing whatever you do more consciously. And so that, for me, is the implication of Sadna Forest. Um, you know, Sadna Forest is, is planting trees, it's reforesting, um, but it's also planting those seeds in people that will grow. If it's not today, it will grow tomorrow or 10 years from now or, or whenever it needs to grow. It will grow when it's fertile. And we say that Sodna Forest is a reforestation project, and it's true. It is a reforestation project, but it's so many other things. It's a community, it's a place to learn. It's just a place where people are exposed to new ways of being, new, new ideas. So I just think that it really transcends this sort of like typical project, I guess. If it was just about hiring workers and just getting like lots of work done, getting like millions of trees planted, like I wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be here and all these thousands of volunteers that have been here and like somehow been impacted through this, like wouldn't be impacted through this and it would just be like a piece of land with lots of trees and yeah, that's great too, but. The work is, for me, makes a lot of sense in terms of reforestation and, and what we're doing. Um, my belief is that the forest is where we come from and where we should, in, in very essence, go back to. Um, I don't believe that means to, to lose everything that we, that we have now, but I think we should now really take steps to, to, to regain the forest that we've lost, really, and to regain ourselves. In, in today's world, everybody wants instant gratification. You know, everybody wants to do something and to see the result immediately. Indigenous forestry is not instant gratification. <laughs> it's the opposite of instant gratification. It's a work that you do and you see the results after a very, very long time. And the results are not um, directly um, gratifying. Uh, it's a very long-term process, it's a very deep process of observing nature, of learning from nature, and of participating with nature in a process that helps it 
grow again and heal its wounds. Um, very few people want to do this work. And um, I feel very lucky to be one of those people that do this work because for me there's nothing more beautiful than this. There's nothing more beautiful than seeing an empty piece of land that has been degraded, that has been destroyed and just participating in the process of rebuilding it and make it some, making something so beautiful and vibrant and, and responsive out of it. Normalement, faut faut qu'a wake mes pépé là. C'est lui mon yo joine comme ressource qui pour aider yo dans Haïti en sapit. C'est ça que fait pour qu'a au kawé mes côté yo la gué à terre là. Si nous te gagne l'autre côté après nous fin prendre ça n'a prend pour nous te remettre yo. Là yo ta va produire l'autre bagarre avec yo. Côté m'a dit ça même communauté al te Haïti. Mais problème qui passe, en Haïti, là on projet vini, le gars doit pied paret, monsieur Jacques paret, il prend ça à prendre fou et n'importe puis mal et aurait été bouillé. Vous comprenez? One of our biggest resources here are a second hand or aid clothes, which are sent here to this particular region um, in Ansipit and in Pedernales to be sorted um, and resent back around the world um, to other markets where they can sell vintage or second-hand clothes for more than what people will hear them pay, pay for them. There's then another market here which then will sell more clothes to local people from this selection of clothes. The rest of those clothes that aren't used here, particularly winter clothing, socks, hats and scarves, things that they certainly won't ever use in a tropical climate such as Haiti, um, are then thrown away into kind of landfill or burning uh, scenarios. There's, a, there's an estimate I heard that 80% of the clothes that are sent here are burnt. Um, which is kind of a sad thing um, that we want to give this aid and we want to help and give out, you know, our old clothes that we don't need. But then there's this whole business around it. And then as soon as there's no real money involved, actually people don't need it and it's discarded and it's then turned into a pollution here where they either leave it as trash or they burn it as trash. And, you know, certainly the people aren't benefiting from that. Um, the Haitian people aren't benefiting from that, and even the world is not benefiting from that process. Um, and so this is why we've, we're increasingly trying to use it in our work here, because it is an abundant resource that's not used, and also to, to show that you can use this in a very beneficial way, such as to stop water and, and soil from eroding. Um, also use it as mulch to stop the evaporation and eventually it will break down actually into the very soils that we will require in the future for reforestation or for, for food production. I think the importance of soil cannot be underestimated. We need soil. If we don't have soil, this world will be lifeless. So here we are constructing contour gabions. Really this is just a technique to slow water down. Every water conservation technique is just slowing the water down slowing it thousands and thousands of times slower than it would normally run uh, on this piece of land because usually it would just be washed off into the valleys and then out to sea. Um, the problem with that is that the water is not used and also you lose your most valuable resource which is your soil and all your organic matter which will eventually make that soil. So water conservation is the key to bringing fertility back to the land. If you stop the water, things will grow, even if you don't plant. And so the first thing we do is we mark the contour of the land, and then we start to put rocks on this contour. 
lacing them with clothing to stop the water even more, but also stopping any soil or organic matter which would fall above the gabion. When the water rushes down the hill, it will fall and be stopped by the rocks and the clothes and then start to build the soil in that, in that edge effect. And really what this is doing is replicating nature. It's replicating the fact that nature will absorb and slow water down as much as it can so then it can use it. When we start to disturb nature, actually what you're doing is you're disturbing the whole water cycle and then suddenly you get a huge amount of erosion, you lose more fertility, more soil, and then you then have this uphill climb. So this is just putting one step up that hill, which then allows us to reforest and, and produce more fertility. I think if you can show, you know, this rock here, like, you know, complete bedrock here, and then produce a forest in 10 years, I think that's a very inspiring thing that we can show the world and show our, you know, show our children and, and onwards to the future that no matter how bad it gets, we can actually, if we make the, the, the right steps instead of the kind of backward or wrong steps, we can, we can have a really positive effect on, it, on everything. So this is really, the, for us, the, the first step and the key to reforestation. Comme on est en Haïti déjà, c'est un pays euh, moyen économique qui fait en pile. Côté que pour un monde veut être l'école, il faut qu'il soit capable de travailler en pile et pas de travail. C'est si euh, 50% de monde dans la communauté a ses charbon au fait, exactement pour vivre avec les gens, pour voir les gens à l'école, tout ça. Nous parlons de faire charbon, nous parlons de couper vieux bois pour faire charbon. Si il si y a charbon, il y a vieux bois à couper. Et pour nous, nous bois coupé en sapit. Ce n'est pas mon sapit qui est coupé. Mon sapit bien loin. On est à faire pas bon, il y a de marché. Là, il vient là, on est rentré dans Boukara, coupé bois. Les responsables, notables, font les délais pour les six pannes coupées bois, ils m'ont dit, quel travail vous avez fait Vous comprenez Qui est-ce qui ça a créé Qui ça nous capable de créer Qui ça nous capable de faire pour le monde ils sont même exactement capables de vivre, ils ont leur privilège pour ne pas couper vieux bois. Et ça, c'est une question. La question qui est euh, débattue sur le c'est ça dans la forêt, il y a une technique pour faire ça, stove. Stove, ok? Um, ça, c'est très économique, les gens qui ont fait manger sous la forêt bois. Ça, exactement, si nous sommes capables de travailler sur ça, nous faisons chaque fois que nous de un stove. Euh, là, le moyen écono économiquement, il est plus bon dans le monde qui a coupé bois pour faire charbon. Ça, le charbon est capable nettement diminuer, à moins que nous fassions une comparaison de charbon avec bois, qui est qui, qui, qui plus économique pour nous. Et là, ça, nous même spécialement, il est capable de charbon qui bois. The advantage to using the rocket stove is to save on the amount of wood that you use to make the fire. It saves on wood because the clay bricks are able to trap the heat inside the oven and very little heat is lost through the top. Another nice advantage to the rocket stove is once the fire has been built, you only need to keep adding very small amounts of wood. Uh, currently, we're still kind of in a design phase for the rocket stoves. We're experiencing a little bit of cracking on the outside of the, of the stove itself which is, I think, leading to these stoves particularly needing more maintenance than is ideal. Maybe I should lighten up about it, but I don't want to put this in the community if it's going to be cracking in two weeks, three weeks. That's the one hand, right? But even if you can't get it perfect, maybe building a stove like this and, and having a better option than something that's out like, like they use normally, this is still going to be a huge improvement. But what, what I would like to do today or tomorrow is build a fire, like a typical Haitian fire, and kind of record how much wood that uses, how long it takes to boil the water, and then compare it to how much wood this uses and how long it takes, and 
really be able to tell people how much money that can save them, basically. I think when you speak in dollar and cents terms, that's going to be the deciding factor if they want you to build a stove or if they'll continue to invest in it with their time. It's not going to take much money, but just with their time, commit to it. And then, of course, uh, what, what we're probably more concerned about is the environmental impact that it'll have, you know, saving the trees. So it's kind of it's a great project like that in my eyes because it kind of serves both pur both purposes, helps the Haitians keep more money in their pocket and also helps with the reforestation indirectly. There's a time when I was traveling in the Midwest and I was in Milwaukee visiting a friend. So I go to the park and I'm reading a book. And I fell asleep while reading a book and woke up to someone offering me a sandwich on a park bench. And she just had a really warm smile, but she was standing so far back and, you know, handing the sandwich out, you know, like she's trying to pass it to like a lion in a cage without getting, you know, mauled. <laughs> and I just, it kind of dawned on me, like, this is what help looks like. Where it's like, I don't, I want your free sandwich, but I don't like the way that you're giving it to me. This experience happened in between my two times in Haiti. And I just started thinking about when I've been giving gifts, it feels really good to give gifts, but it sucks to receive help. The judgment that comes into deciding that someone needs help is where help goes wrong. That odds are you've never taken another person on a, on, a, on a level and never asked for what they need. And that it's only a one-way exchange that emotionally ends up benefiting the giver more than the receiver. I keep going in to help people and I walk away with a lot more. And so I think I'm trying to own that. That it is an experience for me. Um, if you are looking at, at the big picture and you're looking at like trying to change Haiti um, and trying to change it as soon as possible, um, I think you'll be you you'll have a quick prescription to frustration, mm -hmm. and, um, and I think uh, that's why some some people say Haiti is a cemetery of good good projects and good intentions. Um, when you come in and you're like, I've gotta I've gotta do this project. I gotta I've gotta. I have this intention of changing this and that community. But if but instead, if you come in with this expectation to learn, I think that might actually open up more realistic solutions. Um, it's very difficult, eh? Yeah, it is. Like, especially when you, if you have this impending sense of dooms that has come upon this country and you yeah. must solve this now, otherwise this will be horrible. That it's like the state of anxiety, I think, that... The pressure that you put on yourself. Right, man. and I feel like January 12, you know, um, was all about that. It mm -hmm. was like... And, of course, it was a crisis. Um, and... Um, but I think for the experience that a lot of people had, mm -hmm. um, and, and later on, the frustrations that they felt was because of this you know, um, short-lived, you know, fight or flight reaction mm -hmm. to Haiti as opposed to maybe a long-term um, commitment and uh, um, where, where they're not just trying to save Haiti, mm -hmm. but they're trying to experience Haiti and learn from the internal processes of Haiti. And It's been pretty clear that throwing money at things won't make problems go away. You can't just throw money at hunger and wait for it to go away. You can't throw 
money at an adequate shelter and want it to go away. Like there's a lot of good ideas that shouldn't happen. Um, and they shouldn't happen, even though they're good ideas, they shouldn't happen because in the short term, they might, maybe let's say in the short term, they might um, get, equip someone with some more tools, some more things. In the long run, they create a spirit of, of dependence. For me, it's about planting trees wherever I can and not just serving the Haitian people or making Haiti a better country, but trying to make the whole world a better place and trying to make more trees and more food for the whole world. I don't like this sort of like nationalistic view of let's, let's help Haiti because Haiti's got it bad. For me, like people are people and people got it bad everywhere for the most part. I mean, there's some places where it's pretty nice. But in a lot of places it's, it's pretty rough, you know, and I think Sadna Forest could pretty much go anywhere and give hope, you know, even to the people who really have it, have it good, which are a lot of the people who come through Sadna Forest, we give them hope. And sometimes I feel like in the short term, for sure, we give more hope to foreigners sometimes than we do to the local population because the local population doesn't see the good we're doing. They just see these these Westerners, these Blancs, these white people planting trees, these people from all over the world are planting these trees and they just see this tree in the ground and it's not doing anything for them right now, but it will. But it, it, I don't know how much hope it, I, I mean, I'm sure some people grasp the sort of long-term thing, but it's interesting in Haiti, people are really looking for a handout because that's been the way that it's been here. I just, uh, I, keep, I keep finding myself in pause because I keep thinking, what is it that I don't know, that, they, that I should know, mm -hmm. that they know? And what is it that, I, that we could be learning from them that we're in ignorance of this, you know? Um, So when I came here, um, I, I, I heard permaculture and I said to myself, what is permaculture? I came here and 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 I came here. And he um, walked with us, uh, he being myself, we, we walked around and we walked through. Yes. And he showed us the different work that was happening around. I was shocked. I walked walk up front, lui, lui. What is too late. Oui, oui. Oui. <laughs> um, so I walked walk, walk, um, walk to the first station and he showed me something. I was shocked. I walked to the second station and he showed me something. I was shocked again. I walked to the third one and I, saw, I was still shocked and surprised. I walked over there and I saw, and I saw what they did and I was again shocked. So I, so I kept asking myself, what is this permaculture? What, what is this thing? It was a Saturday. Technician prend nous, la chita avec nous. And he sat with us, all of us. And he guided us to. Et puis on a posé quelques bagages, nous on a posé des questions, on a posé. And we had a discussion, uh, and and he guided us through um, some questions. Okay. L'only thing la cherche, la cherche, la cherche pour nous, nous même la bonne nous, nous même la cherche, la cherche, la demande des questions. We, we, we basically kept going at it. Questions and answers and questions and answers, questions and answers. Some, uh, it's, it's in this give and take. This. And, and uh, it's as we were starting to see it and live it. 
c'est là deux trois jours prends prends le lundi c'est là la prendre nous c'est là moi même m'a essayé comprendre ça le fait maquille and and given still two or three days later that's when i started to understand what it might what it means permaculture c'est là l'homme garder moi avec tout travail ça yo tout ça le dit moi pour mener moi avec toute bagaille moi ouais qui rentre faire maquille qui a entré so it, so it's um, as I was as I kept walking through and I kept living it and I that I started to seeing how everything was connected to permaculture. So that's why when when uh, he asked me, you know, how do you understand permaculture? What is it to you? I told him. Basically, I summarize it as which means nothing is lost. First of all, when, First of all, let me show you. This is what I believe our ancestors had, was this true knowledge of living, of, of just being and, and understanding how they can observe and interact in this world. Um, Permaculture can definitely help us in this way, and I believe Sad in the Forest can help us in this way, and I believe how they come together is very helpful. You know, we're doing very similar things, Sad in the Forest and permaculture. Can I look over here? This is where the shower. This is where the shower. And the same water gets piled up here. Parce que l'homme garde travail de l'eau à faire, travail et 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 en papier d'ia. When I see when I see the work um, that the, the productivity that comes out of this, nothing is lost. These weren't here before. Okay. Ça y est pas là parce que qui d'après tout de l'eau à yo, yo mettez fumé là dedans, yo mettez garde tomate noire abdonné, nous pas de gain notaire. I mean look at this. You got tomato coming out here. We didn't have this before. Garde belle bagay, garde belle bagay. Look at this beautiful thing. En papier d'ia. Pas de gain notaire. There was no anana. Look at that. We have citronella. Where? Where's that? You see that? Keep walking. Keep walking. Where? Permaculture is uh, relevant to the newborn, to to the 95-year-old man who lives down the street. Uh, it's relative to any culture, any society, um, uh, any climatical climate zone. It's it's relative to. To everyone, it's relative to all of us, um, and to to ignore it, I think, is a, is a huge failure. Apart on upon apart upon all of us, I think we should grasp it. We should we should embrace it, and we should also recognize it's not something new. It's something that's been practiced for for eons. So you see this water? This is where the wash. You love it too, bagay. This is where the wash everything. You pas prendre l'eau et vous non? You don't take the water and throw it away. Une position, you mettez de l'eau pour servir. They basically put the water in, in a spot, Merci place là. where it can be used. Mm -hmm. This is the They basically compile it and put it in compost. All this work is, uh, is work that, that is being done to rebuild. Mm -hmm. Waterfalls so, all this. The roots are being fed. Yeah. And, and, and so it stays alive. That thing is lost. Thank you. Today, right now, as permaculture is this commodity that you can sell for the thousands of dollars, essentially. Um, and we really don't want to do that. We don't want to say if you can only learn permaculture if you have a thousand dollars. We want everyone to be able to do this. We want everyone to be able to use permaculture, understand it, and make an impact in their own lives and hopefully in the world today.
learn. We believe that all the knowledge that we've gained from, from our work and what we're doing in this life should be freely available to everyone. We don't want to s stop someone from reforesting. We want there to be more forests. We want people to learn this. We want people to get more involved. Um, and so putting this this dollar sign, this, this idea that this is a, a knowledge that's worth so much money that you know only certain people can do it because they have a certain amount of money and we didn't want to restrict to that crowd of people essentially. want to live in a world where there is an option just to give without receiving from the same person. Um, commerce is discrimination. When you uh, sell something, you sell it only to the person that has the price that you demand. Right? So you discriminate against anyone else who doesn't have that amount. And just eliminating this discrimination and saying, if you need it, you got it. This feeling of uh, abundance, of being able to give everything that people need, while receiving at the same time, but maybe from others, maybe not from the same people, is very enriching. It's very, it, it, makes, you, it makes you rich in the true sense. The foundation of a free economy is trust, that, that you know that your needs will be met, whether it's through some sort of uh, seemingly magical event or just through the kindness of people. And sometimes those things really coincide. Um, so that's one aspect of it, being supported and trusting that you will be supported. But then there's the other side, which is the giving. And in order to continue receiving, you have to give and to give freely so that you receive freely. So it's, it's really evident to me that we give and we give freely. We don't, we don't charge for rooms. We never charge for workshops. We don't charge for anything. We just ask that people pay for their food. And a, a lot of people don't even do that, you know? I'm not able to do that, but Sadhana Forest trusts that its needs will be met. And sometimes we might not have anything um, to continue giving, but the faith comes when you really don't have anything and you stick by that idea that I don't need to sell what I'm doing. I can just believe that, you know, something will come. And it, it does so far for eight, nine years it has. What gift economy requires is that you will have faith that you know, what you need in order to give will come. There are a lot of things that are lost in translation. I think there's a lot of things that aren't translated. More, mainly that Sadhana won't give jobs. The lost in translation, you know, is the, the quick answer is that there is no money. But the deeper answer is... I, I still don't have the vocabulary for it. I'm trying to understand myself of the gift economy and living in a world without money. So it's some, some bigger stuff. It's, it's interesting to think about. Um, but I think harder to share at a community where pretty much everyone who's, majority of the people who've come to Sadhana have been able to partake in that lifestyle as a choice, living without money or little to no money, whereas, and that it's kind of a novelty for a lot of people there, but it's a reality for surrounding Ansipit. Len Bali, the economy gratis. Je euh, pense euh, en Haïti, le minimum en pile, l'économie gratuite, c'est le minimum en pile, l'on a gardé, l'on a passé le jour, ou pas, ouais, comme si ça qui est l'économie gratuite. De même pour tout le monde à l'école, si le pas un million, si le pas un corps, il faut obliger de camper la caille, il ne faut pas aller à l'école. 
et c'est si tout pour tout monde à l'université tout si par exemple par une cop il nous a fini l'école là et puis il parle à l'université c'est la mal expliquer que économie gratuite en Haïti ça lisé au barré moi même en tant que yon haïtien yon imaginaire bon pas justement rete quoi que normalement yon monde capable et vinn dans une organisation internationale ou payer l'argent ou leur arriver ou vinn payer pour manger c'est que et pour payer pour travail bon ça pour moi même je pense que c'est une question de membres volontaires étrangers, ça donne à faire ce qu'il peut répondre plus bien passé. Je n'ai pas besoin de rien. J'ai des bons repas ici. J'ai des entertainments ici. J'ai des éducations ici. J'ai des amis, j'ai des familles, j'ai une maison. Et vraiment, tous vos besoins basiques sont pris en compte. Ou encore plus que vos besoins basiques are taken care of there's not really much else you need apart from like these these things for many years i i used to you know to go to work like everybody and uh, I, and i increasingly thought about what's my motivation to do it like why am i going there why am i spending so many hours so much of my creativity and energy on this is it really what i want to do is it really meaningful for me and um, slowly i understood that it's not um, i'm doing it because i'm getting paid for it and that sustains my life physically but i'm not actually finding a a deeper expression of myself in this work and that's where the concept of service came where i can work and my work has a, 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 an an effect beyond me and i guess that's really why i'm here is because of this this emphasis on service and not living for myself you know i could live i could live in the states and work a job and and be comfortable and um it, it wouldn't be fulfilling i'm happy that you know thousands of people share this experience with me and they can see that they can devote weeks or months or sometimes years of their life to something that doesn't uh benefit them directly but still they feel so fulfilled and so happy as though they you know even if they would earn so much money they would never feel like this and they can realize it they can experience it and then they can make their own choice we can't make choices for others but we can enable others to to experience things that can you know give them a, a larger selection in their life a larger array of possibilities and that's what sadna forest tries to do you experience service maybe you don't like it you go back to having a 9 to 5 job um and and making a lot of money and running and running and running just for yourself and that's great but you know that something else is possible and maybe one day you would want to change or maybe not i think that there's this misconception that people can go go somewhere to a community i've i've been to quite a few and oftentimes people go to these communities trying to escape um their old life um but the problems just just follow you know but, or or the problems turn into a, a different kind of problem and and i find that there's still a lot of um you know a lot of work to be done and it can be really stressful at times um but in a way that's it's kind of what i want you know i want to really feel like i'm really putting a lot of energy into this because i really believe in it as a I wouldn't say the model, but as a model for the world that I would like to see. Only thing I would like to know, what working for free mean for you in United States? So, I would like you to spend me something about working for free. What working for free mean for you in United States? You mean if you were to have this project in the United States and be volunteering? 
in that context. Pour moi-même et en Haïti, nous sommes capables de dire dans l'ancien temps, dans l'ancien temps, nous sommes capables de travailler, nous ne pouvons pas utiliser la monnaie, mais il dit que nous sommes capables de faire des choses, nous sommes capables de faire des choses. Trois classes c'est justement. Il y a un échange qui vient arriver il y a un certain temps dans le moment esclavage. Là, il dit que ou travail ou pas touché, ça veut dire que ou typiquement un esclave. C'est que c'est ça normalement qui manifeste dans l'idée de tout haïtien que il y a une histoire ça très bien. Là où fait au travail ou pas bail l'argent, qui veut dire que yo en esclavage. Sadana Forest, là où vivent Sadana, les ou wap travail comme volontaire, mais volontaire pour citoyen haïtien qui travaille dans Sadana Forest, ça a typiquement fait rappeler avec même avec même temps ancien esclavagiste. In the beginning, we called the the first session um, in the forest first work, and the second session after um, after breakfast the second work, and then we switched to calling it first seva and second seva. So the volunteers realized, I'm going to serve. I'm not going to work. And uh, I think that made a huge change. Because what was very clear to us was not at all clear to them. And by changing the name, I think we made it much more clear. And so, yeah, that's how it is now in Southern Forest India. It's first Seva and second Seva. And people ask us many times again and again what, is, what it means, Seva, because they forget, because the concept of service is so alien to them, you know, that, that they, they forget and you have to remind them. Uh, but it's a beautiful process. In the pays of Haiti, you have to know that if an international organization comes into the country to come to work, what they have to do, normally, you have to have a series of organizations to work together with them. Qui donc, ça dans la forêt, il n'y a pas essayé de faire un genre d'activité comme ça. Et je ne veux dire, nous ne pouvons pas même les propres gens qui sont dans la forêt, qui veulent virer la forêt, qui veut dire que les choses ne pas marcher bien. Justement, nous pensons que la forêt est capable justement de créer un emploi. Ok? Emploi est plus de gens, normalement, qui peuvent gérer, qui peuvent superviser les choses. One of, one of the expectations uh, that uh, many people express here is why don't you employ dozens of people? You know, um, It's very difficult for, them, for us to explain to them that we can't do it. We don't have the money to employ dozens of people or hundreds of people like they want to solve the, the, the problem of Pansapi by just giving employment to everybody. So simple. <laughs> um, we don't have the resources, and we also don't feel that this is the solution. Because what if we were able to provide employment for Ansapit? For how long are we able to do this? We know what happens when those, you know, big employing NGOs leave. You know, everybody is is unemployed. So and doesn't have other solutions. So. We're trying to create something much more sustainable, but maybe a little bit less tangible than a job. <laughs> yeah. What we see is people, their needs, and how they can 
together with the environment, live in harmony and in abundance. It doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't matter, um, you know, which nationality they are. It's totally irrelevant to our project. Totally irrelevant. Actually, when I look at this area here, this area for me is the Pedernales River Basin, you know. And it's actually shared by two countries, by the Dominican Republic and by Haiti. But as I see it from the land point of view, it is one bioregion. Somebody, some politicians decided one day that the Pedernales River would be the border between the two countries. But on the land, that has no relevance. Um, I'm not in, disagree in, in disagreement with um, Santa Forest. I just think if you're not, if you're not in your country or... If you, if you look at it from that standpoint, you know, you're, you're bringing your values, whether you realize it or not, at, at whatever level. So try to reach out a little bit and understand the culture to the extent that you might not otherwise know. I always kind of meet a lot of Western people, especially now after like many years that I've lived in Sadhana and people kind of see me more as a member of Sadhana than as an Indian or as a local uh, when I'm in India. But yes, and when they share with me about like how, oh, okay, so there's these group of white people living an easy life here, but what about the Indians? And I say like, what about the locals? Like, what about the Indians? Like, this place is just as open to an Indian as it is to anyone else. Like, that must be pretty obvious for everyone because we do have like open gates and there's like, a, right now there's a sort of decent enough Indian population in Sadhana. And to me, it doesn't matter, like it doesn't even matter to me that there is, if there is a population of Indians in Southern Forest India or not, because to me it's just about people that want to live in Sadhana, living together, or like people that want to live this certain kind of life, living together and doing things that they want to do together. Yeah, I came out here, walked in Essa Pete, but you know, I was in Sadhana. And it, it, not exactly. It's in Haiti, but you know, it's not a really Haitian community. Mm. Sometimes I, 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 I see the difference. I'm mm -hmm. aware of it. Um, and I think maybe part of me, in choosing to come out here, wanted that. I, I think part of me wasn't quite, quite ready to sort of let go of, uh, of the English-speaking mm -hmm. states, um, you know, um, being surrounded by, I guess, internationals. Um, part of me wanted that. Yeah. And a part of me wanted to be in Haiti. So it only made sense that you find yourself in an organization as a, that could give, in my case, both aspects of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a big one. Yeah. The challenge, though, sometimes is that um, sometimes those two worlds don't always, don't always dance well together mm -hmm. um, and what's really hard is that oftentimes you wind up being in the middle as a mediator yeah <laughs> so you you carry that like the emotional weight of, uh, of two worlds I feel the guess that can you ask with you see organization international la normalement rentre dans un pays hein encadrer tout jeune justement créer un certain des activités pour aider Jeunesse, non? Ok? Et des Timoun, ok? Justement, je pense que tout ça, c'est un certain des activités. Ça donne la force de capable de faire. Pour moi, ce whole thing of like, oh, but what about making the locals' lives better? What about like making, uh, reaching out to the locals and like in, involving them more? That's just another form of like being missionaries. Like, oh, we'd just be like Southern Forest missionaries. Let's just go and like, spread the good word of sadhana and like try to involve more and more people and i don't know that that's that's what sadhana forest is about or that's that's what we should be about i don't think that's that's what we should be about for anyone i think in general it's much more inspiring to like watch someone live a certain thing and then you're like much more attracted to it than like to hear someone tell you like this is good look at me i'm living this amazing life you know what you should come live this too like, personally, for me, that's not so attractive. Like, I really like the passive approach, and I think that's what some force takes many times. Here again lies another problem because you have a people, you have a number of people here that are on the, uh, with the mindset of uh, permaculture, 
and part of a big facet of permaculture again is community. So to come here and be involved aggressively with permaculture and not to engage the community uh, to an extent, um, there's a contradiction. Whether you agree with it or not, there is a contradiction, and I think that can cause some conflict with, with, with people. Projet Sadana Forest normalement l'été v'lait exécuté à pour moi même moi ouais que li li semblé tomber à l'eau ça qui capable et fait me comprendre toute bagarre ça arrivé c'est encadrement communauté à qui on manque you know Haiti has had a lot of foreign aid over the years and uh, we're not coming into uh, a new scene here. We're coming into a scene that was already visited by many, many NGOs, many organizations, many hopes, many promises, many, a large history. And um, it's complicated because we come with a very different attitude. And sometimes uh, the expectations that people have that are based on their past experiences are cannot be fulfilled and it's frustrating for them and frustrating for us but we have to in order to become one community which we are becoming one community we have to learn each other's you know uh, um, attitudes each other's expectations and to adapt and to be flexible and i think that we are in that process and that process is a very deep dialogue between us and and the local people that is happening. In time, we will get to a place where um, there's more facilitators in the community, um, like myself, like yourself, mm -hmm. who speak both languages and who can assist others in connecting, and facilitate that connection. Um, so I guess maybe, uh, maybe probably, so on one level, maybe that means more expatriates coming home and and um, and uh, and in their presence and the and the things they get involved with, they become connected. Right? I mean, that could be one way for it to work, right? Um, but maybe that means that the people that are maybe that means that we'll find. Um, Yuri told me that in the beginning she she really thought nothing would grow and this is this is really interesting to me to, to think that the founder of Sadna Forest one of the founders had these moments of doubt and nothing will grow but it, it will grow the trees will grow the trees will come the shade will come the food will come the rain will come when I don't know but I know it will for me, reforestation in barren landscapes is a, is a very long time scale, probably beyond mine or your lifetime. And it often feels like not much is happening. But actually, if you observe in the long, long term, this will create a more fertile scenario. And really, I think we need to look at those time scales. I think we need to look beyond ourselves and look, you know, not just for me, but for my children or for your children and continue to take steps now, which will benefit our future. Nous venons là, c'est pas pour jouer, c'est pour bien. Nous venons là pour jouer, ni en rien. Mais nous venons là pour nous aider mon pour nous travailler ici. Pour nous aider au plan de choucoucou. Sadana, il aime les gens en pile. Il aime les gens en pile. Ni nous même tout, nous aime tout. Nous ne pouvons pas le crazy. On nous mettre tête ensemble pour nous arriver. Oui. Yeah. Okay, the end of the story is this group of people holding hands, you know, being together and making a forest grow. And we're doing it here, and we're doing it in India, in India. And 
I think we're gonna keep growing and hopefully visit a lot of places in the world and touch a lot of lives and grow a lot of trees. For me, that's, that's the end. Years down the road when we look and we see all the trees that we've grown and we see how much we've grown out of it. Mm -hmm.